Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, people of all nations, creatures of all variety, I don't know. Anyway, we got to talk about something. You can see there's two cars in front of me, and they might have something to do with each other, they might not. But today, I got some of the worst news I could have gotten, and that is that... I shouldn't say the worst news. Come on, it's just NASCAR. But in NASCAR, the number nine Mountain Dew car is no more. He has lo not lost, but Mountain Dew, PepsiCo, is backing out of NASCAR. And I don't know that they have any sponsors and with any drivers. It's not just Chase Elliott. It's a number of, uh, it sounds like they've just kind of passed on the sport. They're kind of just, you know what, we'll, we'll back out. Um, and there's some rumors because they announced the Lumar sponsorship going to Chase Elliott, that Kyle Larson's having trouble finding sponsorship because companies are afraid of him. And to me, what I'm saying right now, and I'm going to say this loud and pretty proud, I will support whatever sponsor gets behind Kyle Larson. Whatever sponsor is willing to stick their neck out and say, we think people can change. We think people deserve a second chance. We think people have the ability to make great influences after they've made great mistakes. That first company that steps on board, not the second, not the third, not the fourth, the first company that hops on board of Kyle Larson and says, we are behind him, we believe in him. We think he's changed, we think he's made, you know, we think he learned and got better. That company has more gonads than every other company that would hop on later because they had to put out, they had to put something out there. They stuck their neck out for someone else. And it's a risky thing to do. It is. In business, it's risky. But the fact is, in my opinion, and in a lot of NASCAR fans' opinions, Kyle Larson has paid his dues. The, the man has put the effort in. The man has realized his mistake. He has apologized. He has suffered for it. And if they're not going to be able to find some sponsor for him, you know what? It's the business's loss. Um, because Kyle Larson is a great race car driver and he's going to be making a lot of positive change in the next couple of years um he's going to be you know obviously racing really really well but he's also still going to be very involved in um a lot of the uh charity type work and the the re outreach programs things of that nature um i don't like to call so social justice because social justice isn't a thing if i have to get into that i will my here's the big deal justice is good if you dilute justice with something else, it's not good. You know, if you're going to say we want justice for what has happened, good. That's what we want. Now I want e economic justice. What the heck does that mean? Well, I don't make as much as the guy next to me because he did something. Okay, well, that's not economic justice. That's just justice again. You know, just because it how that justice is dealt does not matter if it's dealt economically, if it's dealt with opportunity, if it's dealt with by popularity, fame, fortune, any of those things. If the justice is dealt, it's still straight justice. If you dilute justice, it's not good. Again, I had to bring that point up because people don't seem to understand that social justice, when you add the social part, it's basically saying only in this area. We're ignoring all other factors. That's a terrible idea. It's not a good way to analyze something. Anyway. But anyway, he will be making very positive change. I'd be willing to put some some bets on that because the man has done a lot this last year and tried to keep quiet about it. He did not uh, ask for any of the notoriety for it. Um, but anyway, that that's a big deal is if Kyle Larson will have sponsorship next year because with that jumping on Chase Elliott and Elliott losing Mountain Dew or PepsiCo, that's a big deal because Chase Elliott just lost his top three paint schemes of the year usually. This year with the Hooters car was hot, but um, – yeah, no more Mountain Dew cars. I'm I'm actually very upset about that. I love Mountain Dew, and you guys probably know it because you've seen the cans in the videos. That's not a paid sponsorship. That's literally, I love Mountain Dew, and I'm a Chase Elliott fan. It was so cool for me to have my favorite beverage on my favorite driver's car. Um, you know, it was on Casey Kane's car really early in his career. I loved it, and now that they're backing out, it's it's kind of a bummer. Um, you know, I've heard Dr. Pepper's getting on Bubba's car, so there's some good news coming around, but the thing I wanted to talk about with this sponsorship stuff is NASCAR. Because NASCAR today, or not asked NASCAR, but Adam Stern reported that teams in NASCAR were still looking at moving the number to the back of the door, maybe the corner panel, maybe the window, uh, this window right here, um, so they could put a big sponsorship on the side of the car. And I saw a good response from, uh, I believe it was Eric Estep, I think, had this response, but he said, 
Companies don't need to be worrying about how big the logo is on the car. You want to worry about fan engagement, and that is a perfect example of NASCAR sponsorship. It's about your logo on the car, yes. But if you think Mountain Dew is, and if Mountain Dew is this team or is the sponsor, then shame on them. But if you think the sponsor is going to care so much that this little sponsor here must be across the door and, and completely change the iconic part of NASCAR, then NASCAR deserves to fall apart and disappear. I'm not kidding. When NASCAR has been fixing things that aren't broken for the last 20 years, 17 since I started watching, 17 years, 18 years, 16 years, so something in that range, they've been fixing things that weren't broken and making them worse just for the sake of doing something. Now look, I think the chase brought some good excitement in, but I also think it brought in a ton of controversy and turned a lot of people off. And then they changed the chase, and it turned more people off. And they changed it again, and it turned more people off. Then they changed the race format, and a whole load of people left. So, and I'm not saying that you can't have a new generation of fans, but if you look at what SRX does, that is what NASCAR's goal should be. If you get on the SRX main Twitter page, they say a real racing experience to bring back die-hard race fans. Is that all you need to say? They're after race fans. NASCAR's after sponsorship money. They're, they want to entertain with good racing. NASCAR wants to have good sponsorship and good uh, manufacturer backing. One of them talks about we want the show to be good and we want the fans in the stands to have a good good time. NASCAR also wants to put on a good show, but realistically, they want the ratings. Okay, they want ratings. They don't. If we have the best race of the year and it doesn't have good ratings, does it really help them? Do they care? Um, that's a big problem. And here's the reason: as NASCAR continues to focus on sponsors first, then the teams, and then and then they have fans somewhere down here at the bottom. And I don't mean the bottom like they hate their fans, but they're not doing things that are good for their fans. And NASCAR seems to have forgotten. You won't have sponsors if you don't have fans. If the fans are gone, the sponsors will leave too because there's no audience to advertise to. And, and I'm, I'm seeing a trend and it's looking like they're going to go down the same stupid path they did before. And it's, it's tone deaf. They put the numbers back, they slid them back and put a light under it. And guess what everyone's reaction was? Yuck, gross, these are ugly, never again. And then we said, you know what? I'm glad they tried. We're glad NASCAR tried, right? We were all kind of applauding, like, you know what? I'm glad they at least gave it a shot to see what the reaction was. And now here they say, oh, well, we know everyone didn't like it, but the sponsor, but the sponsor. No, what the fan says. Listen to the fans. They are the only thing that matters. If you keep your fans happy, you'll have more fans. You have more fans, you have more advertisers to advertise to fans. That's all part of the puzzle. If you cut the base out from under your building, the rest of it crumbles to the ground. You need the base. <sighs> Man, I, I am so frustrated watching some of these terrible business ideas. And it's, it's not official. But the fact that NASCAR is floating it again because we know what's happening. They want it. They want to be able to slap a massive logo on the side of the car. Don't do it. There are certain things you need to leave alone because changing them for absolutely no reason other than to appease a sponsor is a horrible idea. Just like changing the Daytona fo May race or July race, sorry, to the race before the playoffs for ratings because TV said so. Covering Bristol and Dirt because TV said so. Listen to the fans and do what they ask. And they will show up in droves to support you for doing that. And the advertisers will see that the ratings are up and want to advertise. And the cycle grows. The less you focus on fans, the smaller your business gets. It's, it's common economics. I work at a company. The worse service I provide at this company, the less customers that are coming back. We don't want to do that, so our service is excellent. That is our goal. That's how it works. That's business. It's not hard. So anyway, that's my rant for today. Um, let me know your thoughts on the numbers being slid back and, and putting the stupid logos on the door instead of the numbers. Again, that's my opinion, but let me know it down in the comments. Uh, obviously, let me know your thoughts on, as well on Kyle Larson. Subscribe to this channel and the Diecast channel if you haven't already. Um, that'll pretty much wrap it up. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next rant review.